Hi, I'm Kay Diamond with Girls Night Out. Today we'll be reviewing a fashion show that we did a few weeks ago in South Beach. The show today is featured by SLS Hotel, featuring a variety of designers including Beach Bunny. I've actually worn Beach Bunny before in one of my photo shoots. So they have a lot of variety of different swimwear from two pieces to one pieces that fit all different types of body types. You can definitely check them out in South Beach. Now let's go to South Beach and watch the fashion show. Let me be your, let me be your mate Give me some time to prove myself 
I go love you more than anyone else. Pick up your phone, Nana. I want to hold you close, Nana. Me not come and go, Nana. Come and go, Nana.
like the speed of sound Feet can keep on the ground Hey guys, it's me, Kezia Noble, leading female dating and attraction expert for men. And today in this video, I'm going to show you how to approach a woman. Now the majority of the men who enroll in our programs struggle with approach anxiety. And this is for two reasons. The first is that they just have a lack of experience. They have a lack of experience of actually approaching women. And the second reason is they just don't know what to say. It's not as simple as just saying that they lack confidence. In fact, a lot of the men that we help are very socially outgoing. But if you haven't done something before, such as approaching a random woman, it's very understandable that they would feel anxious about it. So let's begin with the two categories. You have direct and you have indirect. A direct opener is essentially you showing the woman that you're interested in her straight away, that you find her hot, that you find her attractive, that there's no filter. For example, you go to her, this is so random, but I had to come over and insert compliment. If you do decide to use direct, make sure you say it with confidence, make the compliment feel bespoke rather than generic. So stay away from things such as you look beautiful, you look great. If you can, try to pick something that she's put some effort into, her style or even the way she walks, something that most guys probably don't notice about her. And if it's in the daytime, you should try and add a false time constraint. This helps ease the pressure. And of course, if you tell her that you've got somewhere to be, friends to meet, this communicates that you're a busy guy with things to do and reinforces the idea that the encounter was purely random. Now let's look at indirect openers. These can be situational observations, recommendation openers, opinion openers, and targeted questions. Now you know what the two categories are, which one is better to use, direct or indirect? Well, that depends on three things. Your mood, the woman, and the situation. Let's start with the women. Now, personally, like a lot of other women out there, I prefer a direct approach from the man. It instantly tells me that he's bold and confident and goes for what he wants. I also prefer encounters that get to the point, people who get to the point, and I am partial to a little bit of flattery. However, there are many women who prefer indirect, and I'll explain why. Women often like to lie to themselves a little bit here. If a man approaches them with a compliment, which is direct approaching, and they respond well to him, they might think that they've come across too easy. So although deep down they know when a man approached them indirectly that he's still hitting on them, they feel more comfortable in the process, even if it is a charade. They convince themselves that his approach has been delivered in a more appropriate, subtle, or even respectful way. Also, a direct approach can make some women feel intimidated or awkward, and as a result, their defense shields go up immediately, making it difficult for the man to progress. Now, sadly, you can't always accurately tell which woman would prefer a direct approach and which woman would prefer an indirect approach. However, if you notice a woman who's quite confident in herself, her body language is quite confident, quite self-assured, the way that she's maybe speaking on the phone, she's got, you know, she's quite loud, uh, she doesn't mind drawing attention to her, maybe she's talking with someone, you can get a general idea that this person's quite comfortable in their surroundings, comfortable with themselves, then this woman will probably respond better to direct than indirect, and older women tend to prefer direct on the whole. But like I said, this is not 100% accurate, so this leaves you with the two other points to take into consideration your mood and the situation or the environment. Let's start off with your mood. If you see a woman you like, but you're not feeling great that day and your energy is pretty low, then you're probably better going with indirect. However, 
if you're in a really good mood, you're high energy and just have that really positive vibe going on, then you'll find you can pull off direct much better. You can, of course, get into state, as I call it, and there are some very effective ways to do this, which is what we teach in our programs, whereby you can literally shift a negative and low energy state of mind into a positive high energy one. But sometimes due to time constraint, you won't have the time to make that mental shift. So this is why indirect would be the best option for you. This now leads me to the third point, which is the situation or the environment. Places where direct are a better choice would be if she's walking in the street or she's in a rush to get somewhere or walking with purpose. If it's outside, the weather plays a role too. The cold and the rain are not particularly pleasant. And so if you were to go indirect, it would actually make you seem uncalibrated and the interaction would feel annoying. She's obviously in a rush and you're bothering her about something. That's how she will see it. Whereas you have much more chance of distracting her from where she was going if you use a very bold, direct opener. It will stop her in her tracks more than if you stop someone who's in a rush to get an opinion opener or situational observation, for instance. Now, a lot of you I know will be watching this wanting to know how to approach a woman in a bar or a nightclub. I'm going to do nighttime environments last, but let's first of all look at approaching a woman in the daytime. Now I've explained when direct is better in the daytime, but what about indirect? Where does that work? So when would indirect be a better option in a daytime situation? It would be better to use an indirect open in a situation where she looks like she has a lot of time. She's in no rush to be anywhere, such as sitting in a coffee shop, strolling through the park, People who go to parks, unless doing a workout, tend to be in a very chilled out mood. Also, using an indirect approach is better somewhere where she might consider a direct approach very inappropriate or could potentially draw too much attention from people around her, such as a museum, art gallery or a clothes store. But remember, if you become really, really good at direct and you're on point with it and you have that watertight confidence, then going direct can actually work anywhere. But that's another video for another day. Places like museums and art galleries and clothes stores lend themselves very well to indirect approach. And that's because you have a lot of talking points around you. For instance, you could use a recommendation opener. You see a hot woman in the museum, go up to her, look confused and say, I think I'm in the wrong museum. Tell her what you're looking for. Tell her what you find interesting and you thought that this museum was the one. Can she make any recommendations of where you should go? You see a hot woman in a clothes store. Hey, I'm buying something for my friend's birthday. What do you recommend? This or that? Pick out two things and show her. You can even ask for a recommendation whilst queuing for your coffee in the coffee shop. Say to the hot girl in front of you or behind you, know something? I always order the same thing every day, I wanna try something new. What do you recommend? Don't say the spiced pumpkin latte, or what are you having? Is that good? Something like this. You can also use situational observations and targeted questions, as I like to call them, in these environments. Say you're in an art gallery, look puzzled at the painting that she's looking at, and just say, you know what, I don't get it. I don't understand modern art, or whatever art you're looking at but you look like you really get it. Can you explain this to me? An even better place to approach women is in the cafes of these galleries and museums. Hey, what do you think of this place? What do you think of the art here? What do you think of that sculpture in the main room? Were you here for the exhibition? If you see a woman walking in the park and she has a dog, that's your talking point. The dog is your talking point. Oh, you don't see this breed of dog anymore. If she has a small dog, say to her, I bet you he's got a big dog's name, you know, and if it's a big dog, say, I bet he's got a really cute little name. So it's a targeted assumption, targeted questions. You have to look at any kind of talking point around you. The more talking points that the person has around them, the better. If she's reading a book, don't ask her what she's reading. Just say to her, you know what? It's so nice to see someone actually reading a real book rather than just scrolling on a screen. We used this the other day for someone on the Seven Day Mastery Program, where he just said that, and then he said, I'm on a digital detox, actually. So I've been, you know, reading books more and just like spending time, enjoying the moment. 
And actually she then said, well, I was doing a digital detox like a few months ago and now I've kept it up with the reading and he ended up going on a date together. Situational observations are literally just making observations about what's going on around you. So this would be best for the gym, for instance. You're in the cafe of your gym, the hot girl walks in. You can just say to her, don't you think it was really busy today? No, I had to wait an hour to get on the treadmill. Or you can say, don't you think like, the music was like really off point today? Like, what were they playing? So the situational observation is the most casual of the openers that you can use. But in some environments, some situations, it's the best one to use. This finally leads me to approaching in nighttime environments such as nightclubs and bars. Here's where indirect and direct can both work. So I'm just gonna give you the pros and cons of both and let you decide. Let's start off with the pros of using direct. People are generally in high spirits. They've had a couple of drinks, the vibe is over the top, people are dressed over the top, so you can afford to be over the top too with your opener. Using direct is probably the most appropriate place where you can use it. The con is that a lot of guys might have already used direct because they're drunk and they did it badly. And she might, as a result, miscategorize you as just another drunk guy. Another con is that women are elevated in clubs. They look their best, they're doled up, usually drinking, and they know men want them. So direct can potentially fuel their ego a bit too much. So let's now look at indirect. Pros of using indirect is that she's not going anywhere soon, so you can afford to invest a little more time into the build-up of the interaction. You can also use that time to assess whether you actually like her or not. She might even have a friend that you actually prefer. Now, if you use indirect rather than direct, you'll find it much easier to move over to her friend. And here are the cons of using indirect in a bar or a club. You can potentially waste time. There is a lot of high energy in clubs, a lot of distractions, a lot of noise, and this can sometimes make an indirect opener a little more challenging. Now let's look at some indirect openers that you can use in a bar or a club. The music here tonight isn't what I expected. And then have that kind of like puzzled face. Leave it open. Leave her a little bit curious as this will encourage her to ask the follow-up question. The music wasn't what I was expecting here. Or what were you expecting? You could say, don't you think the vibe here tonight is just different to what it usually is? And then she might say, well, I've never been here before. Oh, it's your first time here. Where do you usually go? Or you could say, did you see that crazy lunatic dancing? So something where something's happened in the club, like keep your eye, like always look out for things that are going on that you can use as a conversational hook or a conversational starter. It could be the way someone's dressed. It could be like a fight that happened or just the way someone was dancing. Something that everyone kind of noticed who was like observing. A lot of guys when they go to clubs and bars are just looking for the women. They're not really looking at anything else that's going on in the club, which is understandable. However, just observing what's going on around you will potentially help you to start a conversation. Or you could say, you know, what do you think of the music tonight? Is it your kind of music or are you into something a little bit more edgy like, I don't know, Spice Girls? Always remember that being playful, slightly cheeky is a good thing. You want to trigger a little bit of reaction. Be confident to get into some banter right from the get-go. You'll find women respond very well to this. Here are some opening lines I want you to stay away from. Can I buy you a drink? Who are you here with? Have you been here before? Or do you come here often? This sounds so obvious, but you wouldn't believe how many like men still use that sound. line. They see a hot woman, they get nervous, they get anxious, and they just go in with what they're used to. On the ground. Stay in one place